I'm John Skinner, and this supplements my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. In this video, I'm going to make an attempt at using slow pitch gear, both uh, the rods and the jigs, for striper fishing. And slow pitch fishing um, is very popular in many regions of the world, but not so much in the Northeast for striper. So I wanted to give it a try. And those beautiful looking jigs are made by Jigging World in Rochelle Park, New Jersey, and you know they carry all this slow pitch jigging equipment. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to give it a try now. Uh, look. There's numerous unknowns for me here. One of them is the technique. I literally went onto YouTube and watched uh, from different parts of the world, often in different languages, to see what this technique is about. And pretty much, um, it's a lift of the jig. You take a quarter or half of a crank to pick it up. And what you're trying to do is get the jig to come up. The rod has a special action, whips the, the jig up and it flutters to the bottom and those jigs are, are made especially to have that beautiful flutter on the way down not to mention they're just great looking jigs and I'll have links to all of the gear used here uh, in the video description so I did my attempts at, at slow pitch jigging for a while and I you know, wasn't catching anything and I saw a couple of fish come up on other boats and typical northeast jigging technique um, using diamond jigs or stripers is you drop it to the bottom and then you, you give some cranks now you might crank fast you might take a few turns off the bottom drop it back down but pretty much you reel it up you drop it back down you reel it up you drop it back down uh, it's called squidding uh, so of course all the other boats that are out here are doing that because that's the standard way to do it um, and I might mention I have never fished this spot before. So yeah, I'm fishing a technique I've never used in a spot that I've never fished before. Uh, this place has got a good reputation for jigging early in the year, um, so I thought I'd give it a try. So I've got the same slow pitch jig on there, uh, but I've changed the technique. I've gone to typical squidding. Because I don't have, I'm not familiar with this area, I, I decided I, I need to try and catch a couple of fish and nail things down a little bit. So I went uh, to the squidding technique and there we go I've got a fish on all right but I snagged it so at this point I'm thinking yeah I still suck here um, but you know what, looking at this again, that fish is, is hooked high up on the body and I'm reeling straight up. Probably it went at the jig and uh, missed it and got hooked. But yeah, so you know what, I went to a diamond jig. So now I am using the absolute standard equipment and technique here. And again, I just you know want to nail some things down and, and then go from there. And yep, squidding the, the diamond jig and um, it's not going to be too long before I, I hook up a fish. And I'm thinking it's probably been, it could be close to 40 years since the last time I used this technique. But yeah, it's pretty uh, straightforward. So yeah, yeah, legitimately hooked fish. Okay, I mean, and, and part of not knowing, um, not having jigged here before is, um, you know, I got to kind of figure out where they hang. And so the, the bottom goes like 50 some odd feet up to 20 something, back down to 60. Uh, so there's tremendous structure, big tide rips, uh, like, you know, two and a half mile an hour drift uh, approximately. Um, so I'm trying to nail all that stuff down. and. So I made some more drifts, some more attempts with the diamond jig, and I wasn't getting them. And I said, you know what, let me go back to that slow pitch jig, because I've never been a fan of the diamond jig. It's just, there always seems like there should be something better, and clearly, those slow pitch jigs have got to be better than a diamond jig. So uh, I've gone back to it, and I'm squidding it.
Okay, my first uh, legitimate catch there on the slow pitch jig. You'll notice on these jigs, okay, so th the hooks are actually up in the front of the jig, not on the tail. And you know, you, we'll touch on that in a bit. But you know what? Like I said, I, I looked at what they do and went online, <laughs> looked on how to rig them up, and you know that's what it is. And uh, so that's what I'm using. Now that fish came pretty high off the bottom, and thinking back to, Jesus, it's like my late teen years, huh, maybe early 20s, of doing this kind of fishing, um, especially for bass and weak fish, the technique was you drop down, you take a few slow turns off the bottom, and then if you burned it in, then you're basically in the bluefish zone, but the bass and the weeks were always a couple of cranks, just, you know, just right up off the bottom, and... Um, yeah, I'm thinking I might have been, you yeah, see that one was up kind of high too. I might have been focused um, a little bit too much on the lower part of the water column when I was trying to do the slow pitch technique. So I'm just, uh, I'm surprised at how high these two bass have hit. But, uh, yeah, that's that's where they are. And, and these things are hitting, uh, like I mentioned, there's a lot of depth variation, but I was pretty much 25 to 35 feet. And you could see the fish on, on the fish finder. Um, yeah, they were marking quite clearly. Now, something that's very important about this kind of jigging is that you know, you're dropping to the bottom and then reeling up, as s or in the case of slow pitch jigging, jigging up. As soon as that jig hits the bottom, you want to move it. You don't want it laying there. You, you can envision fish watching that thing fall, and if it bounces itself right up off the bottom, well, that's a, a pretty natural thing. And uh, yeah, so that's you got to focus on that. As soon as that line stops, boom, get it up off the bottom. And a lot of times that's when the hits come. Usually, not on this trip. Nice, healthy, chunky bass. Yeah, that looks good. So something that's fun about this kind of fishing that wasn't so much back when I was younger is... You know, the gear is completely different. If you're using this gear, so that's a 7-ounce rod. Um, it's rated 20 to 40 pound test. Uh, it's called spiral wrapped or uh, acid wrapped, so the guides work their way around the rod from the top to the bottom. A very comfortable feel. Uh, the reel weighs 13 ounces. That's a Maxell Hybrid 20, um, spooled with 20 pound test braid. So this is not the same stuff that we used when I was younger, which is pretty much... Yeah, pen jig masters and 40 pound mono on stiff rods and uh, yeah it's much different this stuff is just a joy to have a fish on um, and uh, like I said in some of my other videos I've, I've got some larger bass on this kind of gear and it's, uh, it's just a lot of fun and this is a tsunami rod and they make uh, a variety of slow pitch uh, rods both spinning and casting or conventional uh, with different power ratings, whereas this is 20 to 40. Okay, these fish are hitting in a relatively small area, so by the time I've reeled that fish in, uh, I'm off it and it's time to go back up. So in the first uh, maybe 20 seconds or so here, I'm going to miss a couple of fish, and I'll say more about that in a minute.
So I think I'm snagged on the bottom for a second here, but I'm not. That's a fish. Well, there's a disappointment. Yeah, I was kind of afraid this could be the case. Foul hook bluefish. Yeah, I hadn't been catching any bluefish, so I wasn't suspecting that uh, it would be a blue, but well, it is what it is. You like to break your fishing rod? Right there. Do that. That's a good way to break it. Yeah, I'm amazed at myself when I look at some of this stuff. Um, yeah, I know better than to do that. I'm, I'm trying to get to the leader. And yeah, you grab the rod up there and pull, a lot of rods are going to break under that circumstance. But uh, yeah, these, yeah, there we go. Let's do it again. Ugh. I mentioned the missed hits. A few times while fishing, I would get these things that just felt like all of a sudden you hit some resistance. It wasn't, you know, a, a really sharp hit or anything, but you'd, you'd be cranking, cranking. So now I'm starting to question, you know, how stupid am I? You know, I'm, re I'm reeling up vertically and I've got the hooks up at the front of the jig. I understand that's the way they're usually set up, but you know what? I kind of think it would be much better since the fish are chasing from the bottom of the jig that the hook should be behind. So I turned it around. I, I cut it off and tied it on the other end so now the hooks are on the bottom. <laughs> this is actually the very first drop doing that and yeah five cranks and, and I'm in. Um, when I do this trip again I'm going to turn it around and have those hooks at the bottom. Now they do have uh, people will rig these jigs to have hooks both in the front and the back. Uh, boy, it's a lot of hooks. Four hooks, I don't know. Uh, I'm just thinking about what a mess that could be with bluefish or something. Um, yeah, but that's definitely, next time out, I'm going to try keeping those hooks off the back because I think I would have hooked a lot more fish had I done that, uh, at least for the squidding technique. Now, if you're actually using the slow pitch technique, it could be much different. And the next time out, I'm going to try that slow pitch technique. Um, but this time, I'm going to make sure I work it up higher into the water column. And I, I think maybe I was just working it under the fish. Uh, it's, it's surprising for bass, but you never know. You know what? A couple times I did see bass up on top. And, um, yep, I, you know what? We tried different things. So this bluefish is like spitting up everything here. There's squid. There's Bunker, I saw Porgy, uh, yeah, he's, um, I'm not sure why he felt it necessary to hit the jig, but um, that's what they do, they eat.
And getting back to the hook placement, well, yeah, so that was a bluefish, and it's pretty typical. Um, they hit from behind, whereas you know, I did get bass there, and they were gladly hitting the, the front hooks, which is what they do. So uh, I'm happy to hook up this last one here. And All right, so, uh, yeah, this was a fun trip for me. I, I was really clueless. Um, I was fishing a spot I hadn't fished before with lures that I had never used and a technique I had never used. And it ended up working out. I, I caught some fish, and I learned a lot. And looking forward to next time getting out there. So, all right, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.